Hey, Brother Murdoch. And John. Hello, Joshua. Hello. Mm. How you doing today? It's a uh, Thursday. It's a Thursday. Almost There's Brother Murdoch. How you doing, guys? Sorry I'm late. Good. Oh, you're fine. Uh, Nephi said that he was waiting. He was going to be a little bit late as well. So we can maybe wait for him. Tyler, he's not showing up today. He had something come up. Okay. Um, so I guess it's just Chris and Nephi that we're waiting on. Okay. I'll send Chris a quick message. Just ask him. Uh, while we're waiting, Brother Murdoch, did you get a chance to uh, ever see if you could figure out what the problem was? 
No. Um, we can look at that now while we're. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Something to do. Yeah. Or you can eat your food first. That's fine. Oh, um, uh, enjoy your I breakfast. always tell people, never wait for me to finish eating because you'll never, because <laughs> I'll, I'll never be done eating. <laughs> Okay, you're, you're talking with people who completely do the same thing. That's true. <laughs> Students are notorious. <laughs> the amount of times I ate food in your class, too many. No, that's fine. I encourage it. Good, good, good. Bagels are just so good, you know? Yeah, I love bagels. I was so devastated the day my dentist told me I could never eat bagels again. I was having this weird jaw problem where when I chew... What? I would pop. Yeah, and I go, it only happens when I eat bagels. And he just laughs. Then don't eat bagels! <laughs> yeah. Wow. They're, when you toast them, though, they don't have the same problem. I, I did figure that trick out. I don't have maybe, the same problem when I toast them. So Maybe it's just like the raw chewiness of them. Yeah, they're really chewy. And big. So... There was this bagel true. place that I used to love called Sunshine Bagels. What's that? Oh, I was just saying that's very true about, like, they're just, bagels are big. They're not as big as you'd think they are, but they are. Yeah, they are big. Bagels used to be really popular when I was younger. There was this huge phase where Einstein bagels and a bunch of others came up and were really popular. And they don't, they're not as popular anymore. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so this is what we were working on yesterday. Um, are you, Josh, are you familiar with the SQL Server project that, that uh, John is working on? I know that it's happening, but I haven't followed it. Like, I don't know what's going on exactly. So they're working on a database that stores all the city, states, and countries in the world for most of the cities, mainly. So that if somebody says where they live, it can fill it in for them or validate that, that it's a valid city, um, that okay. kind of thing. Or if you want to like filter down to, I only want to show things in this area, then it'll kind of Oh, I see. Filter. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so to do that, we've got to create a database that can store all of those tables. Now, we do have uh, database servers that are used right now um, for the Constellation project, as well as we have another SQL Server instance that's for uh, Confluence, uh, which Confluence is like a wiki kind of thing that we're doing as well. Okay, it's like database already there or something? Yeah, but but there's this concept called a, um, oh, what's it called? It's not a, it's called a bounded context. So when you're doing microservices, um, you have this concept of a bounded context. And what that means is, Say you have, in our case, we have Confluence or Constellation. I always mix those up now. It's really bothersome. Okay. And then we have, so we have Constellation. And now we're going to have this location service. And Constellation has a database. Well, if we were to, so right now, the goal of microservices architecture is that um, the, only, the only interaction that occurs between these two systems happens through um, REST calls, basically. So other than that, they keep to themselves. The location service keeps everything that's belongs to the location service. The constellation keeps everything that belongs to constellation. So if we were to, to break that and say, um, I can get this arrow to listen. 
Come on. Anyway, I'll just do it. If we were to say, we can just share a database, what do you think the problems could be that would arise, could potentially arise from sharing a database rather than keeping them separated? Any ideas? Can you elaborate on the question? So say I have location service using the same SQL server as Constellation. What problems could that cause? Well, I think if you change something for one, then it could affect the other. Yes, that's absolutely right. There we go. Good job, John. <laughs> <laughs> so if, say, this server, say this is a database, um, went down like this, right? Then everything's down. So say we messed up something when we were working on the location service and it brought down the database, then what else is down? So if you took out the database, then locations would be down, constellation would be down, and everything would be down. Yeah. Nothing would work. Right. Yeah, so then let's redo that scenario. And let's look at, oops, there that, all my drawings. Okay. Now let's look at another way this could happen where we've got, uh, let's do it the right way with a bounded context where the location service keeps all of its data within its own service. So in that case, say um, this database goes down, then what goes down? This location service. Just the location service. And how critical will that service be for most of the Constellation website? Not. Yeah, viewing projects, um, expressing an interest in a job, finding a candidate, viewing their portfolios. None of those things depend on the location service. At least I don't think they do or would. <laughs> Unless we mess it up later on. <laughs> yeah, I might, they might depend, some of them might depend on it, but I don't think all of those things do. So maybe one of those things would go down, but not all five of those features would be unavailable in that case. So this is called bounded context, and that's what it means. It means keeping concerns related to one area of functionality within a single service and not bleeding across um, resources between services. Now, there are a lot of instances where you'll see four or five different services that all share the same database, uh, that happens quite a bit. But it also causes this tight coupling, which we just talked about. So anyway, it's worth the effort for us to create a separate one. Hello, guys. Hey, Nephi. Hey, Brother Morta. How are you guys doing? Great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Sorry, I wasn't another call from from work. No problem. Do you work? You work at the university, right? Yes. I forgot this. Cool. And what do you do again? I'm doing um. It's called the service desk. So oh, yeah, I receive call calls from the students. If they have any issues with iLearn or any technology issues. I'm a hero. <laughs> Not you, but other people have saved me with problems so many times. iLearn is confusing. iLearn is so freaking confusing. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you have specific hours you work, Nephi? Like, or is it you could get a call anytime? 
Um, so right now, so right now for the for the summer, we have like twenty people that are receiving calls. Even though we're receiving like three calls, four calls a day, so it could be at. I, thank you for asking. So it could be at random times that I could receive a call. But in the in the meantime, I rather like. I I'd rather like be doing something instead of like watching TV or playing video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, cool. Well, we were just going over uh the project of creating the location service for a minute and discussing why that should have a separate database. Kim. Um what do you guys do you guys want to keep working on this or is there something else you wanted to talk about? Mm, well, so my kind of idea going into this was going into automated testing one more time so that mm -hmm. in the future we can kind of break off and do separate groups. But since Christians isn't here, maybe if we just want to fix this, finish this, and then I, I messaged Christians. He hasn't responded yet. Okay. Um, so maybe if we just finish this. And he doesn't show up. That's fine. Get something done. Well, yeah, it's up to you guys, really. Whatever thing you'd like to focus on, it's fine with me. Would you like to learn more about this, nephew, or would you want to go into automated testing? I know, John, you're probably good either way, right? Yeah, th this is just my personal project, but I can talk with Brother Murdoch whenever about this. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I mean, I it's good for me to learn anyways. <clears throat> yeah, I think the same. It will be good. So, um, yeah, if, if we can do this and then, yeah, maybe some other time we can talk about the automation tests. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's do that. And maybe um, if Christians does come super late, what we could do is we could assign um, a, a test that we could write over the weekend until Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, we could come together and work on it and kind of see how it went, what it looks like, if it's good, if it's bad, what we need to change. I know Nephi had a question too. We could probably go over. Um, I think I I remember getting a message from you Nephi and I wasn't sure if my answer was helpful or not. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Nephi was talking about that in stand-up. Yeah, let's do those two things. That, that sounds good. Cool. Okay. Then, then everybody gets something worked on today that they're interested yeah. in. <clears throat> All right, let me just call this bounded context. I still don't know where all these drawings are going. I, I always create a new drawing and then I don't even know where it's getting saved. Okay, so if we go out to Kubernetes um, workloads, we're having this issue with this guy, SQL Server Location Test Instance. And if we go to the container logs, it's saying the system directory dot slash dot system could not be created. So what I thought would be helpful is if we were to look at one of the running SQL Server instances and the permissions on things versus on this container and see what the difference is. It's one possibility. Does that sound good? Yeah. Good to me. So is that kind of like, would that be like read, write permissions or what does that look like? Did you say read, write or rewrite? read write yeah it's like read write permissions it's saying that the user so when this runs it says this container is running as user ms sql uh -huh. and it's saying that that user see it's non-root meaning it's not running as the root user oh, okay now kind of a cheater fix way to solve this is just make it run as root uh -huh. and then can do anything and then it automatically works but sometimes you don't want it to be root you just want to have more permissions yeah 
running as root is dangerous because it gives if someone were to get access to the container somehow yeah they have full access to do a lot of things like tcp dump and things like that that would That's allow right. them to hack into the network basically sure and figure out things they shouldn't be able to do but if you lock it down to just this non-privileged user who can do just the bare minimum uh -huh. then if someone gains access to the container they only have whatever access that limited user has okay so they could probably bring down the database but they probably couldn't get any further than that okay it's kind of like the whole bounded context thing if you lock them down to just one little thing then it can't bleed over to everything else sure it's bad for that one thing but everything else is fine yeah exactly so let's take a look at the file system that it's trying to create on a working container. So here's a working container SQL server dev. I'm going to shell into that using kubectl exec. I'm going to paste in the name of the container and do bin sh. You guys are welcome to follow along. It won't hurt anything if more than one of us are shelled into the container. So if you guys want to do the same thing, you're welcome to do it. Because sometimes if you're like me, going through things with my hands helps me remember it better than with just my eyes. Yeah, that's true. So here's the command. And now I'm at the shell prompt. You'll notice I have a dollar sign. That means this container is not running as root either. If I were running as root, does anyone know what the symbol would be? Is it like, um, it's like wavy? A tilde? Yes, the tilde. Is it? Um, close. So, uh, so tilde is my home folder. Now, if it looks like, hold on, let's see. I think there's another container I can show you that is running as root, which I'm not super excited about, but it is. So if we go to constellation, there you go, that's the symbol. So if I say, who am I? root. I and didn't know that command was a thing. Who am I? That's hilarious. Oh yeah, I love that command. It's That's really hilarious. nice. <laughs> John and I were laughing about that yesterday. Who do you think I am? Yeah. There you go. That tells you the answer. <laughs> it's also really useful in uh, Linux. Yes. If you're trying to be root and then not root back and forth and you forget who you are for a minute. <laughs> I've done that a lot. <laughs> or you can change to another user using SU. Um, anyway, but if you're root, this little symbol would be there. So you wouldn't need to do who am I. It would tell you based on the symbol. So if I say who am I here, who's it going to be? It's in the logs. It's right in front of you guys if you're looking at the screen. What user is it running on the SQL Server instance? This container is running as, do you see it? Just the MySQL user. Mm -hmm. So that's who I am. So now if, if I want to find, so I'm in the root folder. So if I do ls,
Notice it gives a path. So I'm going to go to that path opt MSSQL ls, and then I have bin. Interesting. Could not create. Cannot be created. Slash dot system. Interesting. And then system will be a hidden folder, right? Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, because it's a dot system. That's interesting though, that it's not here. See that? So there's one hidden folder. Now, let's see, what is the folder that it runs from? I don't see a folder that it's running from other than the root folder, which to me implies that it's trying to create that in the root directory. But I don't see one in a working instance, which is strange. ls-la shows you hidden folders as well. So if we do ls, you don't see hidden folders. la, ls-la, then you see this hidden folder. So the error is coming at startup. This is what starts the application <laughs> or the database. So if you look at the Docker file, it runs this command to start it up. I have a hunch that if we changed the user, that it would just get a different error. I think this might be a red herring error. That's not really the real problem. That is that option before the user OPT. So this is a command and this is a path. Okay. So in the file system, there's a folder called opt in every Linux Unix environment. Oh, okay. And a lot of times they'll use it to install software that's not core to the operating system. Yeah. So like in this case, SQL Server is not core to the operating system, it's an add-on. Uh -huh. And so they chose to put it in the opt folder. Okay. Even in Mac, if you look at my Mac, um, if I go to CD opt, you'll see there I've got two programming tools that I use that they're not essential for a Mac to run, but I've just put them in that folder. Gotcha. So yeah, it's trying to do this. And when it does this, this guy says, okay, I'm gonna run as Microsoft SQL guy user. Now, if we were to change this, we would need to do a new build um, of the image because the Docker file would have changed. 
you can also override, I think, who they're running as. So if you look at another project, the Constellation project, for example, or something, let's see, let's see how it works. Um, Docker file doesn't have a user directive in it. So you can look at this one. It has user MSSQL. But if you like this one, there's no user. If we go to the dev.yaml file, there's often a thing that controls the user in here, but it's not. So that tells me that the default, the, the base image for .NET runs as root, because we're inheriting from this .NET core image, which must run as root, and we didn't override it. Now there's another one that we could look at. There's this one. If you look at the Docker file, it doesn't have the user, but in the security context, it has this privilege true which I believe makes it run as root. Let's try it out. So if I say get pods, ah, see the little hash? So I'm running as root in this one, right? See the hash there, there. Over my group. So if we look at this one, not this one, this one, the Docker file doesn't specify a user, but it has the security context privilege true line right below the liveness probe. So if we were to add that, John, that would be a workaround for temporary purposes. We could elevate privileges to root, which then he could create anything and then say, okay, now what are you going to complain about? Because now you can do the thing you said you could and then see what else it fails on. If it mysteriously works, we have a temporary workaround until we figure out the real issue. My guess is it'll hit another error. Well, only one way to find out. Yeah. So here's an example one. And if you want to make that change, then I'd be glad to prove the PR on, on it. And it's just the uh, security thing? Uh huh. Yeah. Security context privilege true. Does that matter where in the file I put it? Um. It has to be within the spec. So if you look at line 28 of the sample I sent you, mm -hmm. there's something that says spec. And then inside of that, you have containers. Okay. And then um, I think the security context is nested within um, underneath containers, under where it has name, image, ports, resources, volume mounts. It should be at the same level as those. Image, ports, resources, volume mounts, liveness probe. It should be indented to the same degree as those are. Yes, yeah, so what I'm seeing is in the location test, it already has um, the security context thing. Okay. It has security context privileged true. Oh. Interesting. So, let's see. Find 
answer. So that means in theory, I can become root, which won't solve our issue for now, uh, but it's something interesting to look at. So if I say, oh yeah, I can't shell into that one, but I could shell into this one. If I say, Su do or if I say SU root. I don't know the password. Sudo SU root. Of course there's no sudo. Anyway, I think you can become root. Um, so if we change the image right now, it's using the same image for all the SQL Server instances, which probably isn't the best thing. So let's see here. What is in this Docker file exactly? That's it. Just trying to think of an easy way to test the idea of changing this to root without changing the image for all the SQL Server instances. Um, okay, what we can do is change the image. So right now in the YAML file, you have a reference to a SQL Server image. If you change that to this instead, then it will run off of um, that image directly, the Microsoft version of it, which doesn't call out what the user is that I'm aware of. It might, it might. Let's try this. If I do. If I just say docker run, taking a little bit to download that. This container is running as user MSSQL. So that is the default user. Interesting. Okay. So that wouldn't even, so what you could do, John, is you could change the user in the Docker file to root. Um, so in here, you change this user to root. The only problem with that is. It affects everything. 
Yeah, it affects all the SQL Server instances. Um, so you could create a uh, separate repository. So I did for my, for my uh, Confluence one, you might want to take a look at the Confluence one. Um, I'll show you it. Let's see, is it in here? Yeah. So I have a s completely separate, I mean, this is exactly what you want. Uh, it has test and prod, that's all. And it has its own separate build completely for this SQL server and its own separate Docker file, which in this case is the same. But if you were to do something like this, where you create a new Git repo for the location server, then you could change it without messing up anything. I'm not saying you would mess up something. I'm just using it in a general sense that it would be isolated from everything else. Mm -hmm. So kind of like uh, almost copy the server and then make those changes? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you could change the trigger to point to your new GitHub. All right, I can give that a try. One thing, though, is because you're doing that, it's going to need a step like this. So if you look at this, I mean, you could really just copy this whole repo, this one for Confluence that I did, because it's exactly what you want. And then you just need to go in and change anywhere it says SQL Server Confluence. You'd need to change it to the name of yours. But that's a pretty easy change. You'll notice this one, the cloud build test, actually builds the image first. So it does that, then it pushes the image, then it stops the pod and deploys it, which is more steps than what yours does currently. Just checking if this is a public project. I think it is. Public, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I can send this over chat. There you go. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So if I'm creating a new repository, should I just put it under my own? Should I put it in the Constellation project? I would put it under Constellation, please. Then we can find it easily. Okay. Do you have any idea what I should name it? Um, I'd call it SQL Server uh, Location, something like that. doesn't matter exactly how you name it, but it should indicate that it's a SQL Server project and it's for the location service somehow. And public, correct? Yeah, you can make it public. Okay, do you mind if we shift gears, John, and look at Nephi's? Yeah, talk? go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, okay, Nephi, you get to uh, lead us now to what you'd like to work on. Yeah, thank you, Brother Mordor. So let me share my screen for a sec just to show you. Okay, so I'm on the Google Cloud platform. Let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm under triggers. And here's where I can manually trigger the, 
the tests on, right. on, on every environment. Would you mind giving us a quick rundown of what's going on just so I can kind of... Know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so basically what um, we've been trying to do, but my brother Mordor has been helping me a lot pretty much. <laughs> He, he, I, I'm pretty sure in five minutes he can resolve this, but uh, he's been really nice to to like walk me through the process, help me like understand how it works. Oh, we, what we're trying to do, we're trying to trigger automatically trigger the tests on, on every time. Um, some changes are are de are deployed into dev. So let's say that today we make an update on, on the login page. That that's what I'm. What's my understanding? And we push those changes, and then uh, whenever that that image is is created, we're gonna trigger. We wanna trigger automatically trigger the tests to check that there are no errors with the new changes. So with the tests that we are um, coding, we want them to run. As soon as we deploy some changes to to um to death, so we've been working on that. Um, we we already got a lot a lot of things done, okay. but right now, um, I'm not seeing that they are being triggered. Okay, awesome, thanks. So, yeah, so usually, what is supposed to happen if everything is is okay, you can manually trigger. Or you can enable like an auto trigger. So every time there's new changes pushed to dev, automatically the, the tests are gonna run, or you can manually trigger them here. So right now what I'm doing, I'm manually triggering them to check that they are working. But I'm getting this error, it says fail to trigger build. Rec Request contains an invalid argument. Okay. Now we were going to have it called as a step in the main build process. If I remember last what we were working on, um, does that sound right? The direction we were going, I'm a little fuzzy. Um, just let me, can you repeat that? Yeah, so the confluence, uh, or not confluence, darn it, constellation web uh, build, we were going to add a step to the constellation web um, build to call the tests. Does that sound right? Yes, and I think we did. Um, we already did that. Let me see. I have okay. to go in here. I think we already added that, that step. Okay. Actually, I think we already approved those changes. Um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, there it is. Uh, yes. So this is the, the step that we did. Okay. Constellation test. No. Post development GCRL productivity constellation auto test latest. Okay. Um, now, one thing that looks a little off to me, well, no, this should work. This should work. So can we look at the build, can we run the build for Constellation Web and see what happens when it gets to this step? Um, yeah, let me go back to here. So you want me to run the build? The Constellation Web build, please. Constellation web build. Um, do you mind if you remind me how to run the Constellation web build? It should be here if you scroll down. Web app and then dev deployment. Web app, dev deployment. Yes. 
So this one, right? Uh -huh. Okay, then let's follow that one. So show? Yes, please. Thank you. So if you look at the left side, you see zero, one, two, three are the steps. Okay. And if you expand, um, you can actually click and expand that column a little bigger to read more. There's a line on the right side, you just drag on it. Oh, let me see the right side. Right here, this line. If you okay. click that and then drag to the right. Oh, you mean, yeah, got you, got you. Cool. Now, can you see your test in there? Um, yes, yeah, so this one, right? Yes, so this, the last step that it's going to do is run that test. Okay. Oh yeah, because now, now that I remember, it's every time we make a build out mm -hmm. of uh, develop, we're triggering the test. Yeah, and the build is triggered by pushing code. Okay. So you can either run the build manually or you can just push some code to Constellation Web and then that triggers this as well. Okay. And then um, while we wait, what was happening on the, what, what, what was I trying to trigger before? So that was a separate project that is kind of broken actually. I, I don't know. Oh, let me think. That other one is supposed to be, and maybe it's not broken. I think I said that wrong. The other one is actually a process that builds the Docker image that we're running here. That last step is supposed to run the image that was built from the other one. Unable to find image. That's what I wondered is if it's there. So do you know how you would look for that? For the image? Um, let me see. I think I might be able to, to do it. Um, let me go to container registry, images, constellation, mm -hmm. test. Good. Now we don't see latest, do we? Oh, no, we don't. We don't have a tag for latest. So that is the problem. Now we'll want to go back to the build you were running initially because that's the one that should have created the latest tag. Okay. So you mean... Remember you were running the trigger at the very yeah. beginning? Let's go yeah. back to that. Okay. This one. So, yeah, I'm. I'm thinking this is mislabeled right now, where it says integration test dev environment. It's really building the automation tests. That's really what it's doing. And initially, it was this, but now it's not. Um, it's not what it says it is. It's really just building the integration tests. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens, You did you run this earlier when we just started or no? Can't like remember. doing, like running it like this? Yeah, you already did. Yes, and it creates a fail to trigger build. Okay, can you click on where it says, uh, can you click on the name? Sure. And if you scroll down, okay. So the short Shaw, it's saying it doesn't want that. So you can just hit the garbage can on the right side. Sure. Uh-huh. So 
Wait, so we're 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 getting rid of this short check? I'm trying to remember if we want... I can show you. Let me let me open the the code. Okay. I don't think blank is a valid value. Valid argument. Now see where it says short SHA on line 24 where your cursor is? Mm -hmm. You'll notice one difference if you go back to the trigger. Oh, the underscore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually a different variable. Yeah, so it's not saying we won't have that variable if we delete it in the trigger. It just means you can't pass it um, from the web page here. That's all. Okay. So it just, uh, in some builds, you want to be able to specify a specific SHA before you start the trigger, but we don't need that in this one. Okay, because it will be just, we want it to be automatically generated by? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, maybe that's why the... What? Failed to trigger build request contains an invalid argument. Hmm. Okay, can we look at it again? Sure. Triggered manually push to a branch master cloud build configuration file. Is that name uh, correct? Cloud build dev? Is that the right name? Let me see cloud build. Yeah, it is. Okay, steps, name. It said, what did it say contained an invalid argument? The request, right? The request, yeah. Um, so there's actually a way we can run this from the command line, which might give us more insight into what's failing. Right, because we cannot see it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so do you know how to get to the cloud shell from here? <clears throat> well, um, I wonder if this will be. Yep, that's it. I just haven't used it yet. Okay, yeah. Another, and, and it's funny because honestly, I saw that error. I didn't even have a clue where to start. So I said like, wait a minute, I don't even know what's Docker. Like, like, I mean, I know like how it works, but I really have like no clue what's going on in the background. So I had to do some research. Mm -hmm. Now I have a clue of Docker, like pretty, like if you, I think, I think I understand Docker. Great. I just need some practice for mm -hmm. the Docker files. Good. But then when it comes to like the Google Cloud platform, I was just blank. So I still had like a lot to get to this point where we can like get this fixed. Yeah, I understand. No problem. So you'll want to clone the, um, you'll want to clone the, the get project for the automation here by saying get clone and then the URL. Then the URL? Mm -hmm. And if you want it, you can get it from VS Code. Uh, yes. From here? Yeah. So if you type in the terminal, get remote dash V. You said get remote dash? Mm -hmm. V like Victor. Okay. Perfect. Enter. So there you go. That's the URL. Okay. It's saying where it's fetching and where it's pushing, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Perfect. And then, one second, just pulling up the command part.
I always forget the syntax on doing this. It's uh, okay. So the syntax is I'll just paste it into the chat. Okay. Um, chat G Cloud builds. I'm sure we'll get it wrong the first time, regardless of what I do. <laughs> but, uh, dash dash config. Okay, it's something like this. We'll start with that. This one. I can't see until you paste it because it hides the chat window from me. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, and there should be two dashes next to the config. I don't know if Zoom somehow changed that. I think it did. I think it made it into one dash. Yeah, perfect. Looks good. Um, no such file. Oh yeah, we need to CD to that in folder. That folder, okay. Okay. It's just missing an S on the end. Oh, S small details. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think from here. Yeah, it should work. Cool. <laughs> so we got the same. Yeah. G Cloud builds submit request contains an invalid argument. Green temporary tarball. Hey, thanks for going through this. I actually have some come up and I gotta go. Okay, no problem, Josh. Have a good day. Awesome. Yeah, I'll just message you guys in the QA chat later with some updates. Cool. Sweet. Thank you guys. I'm going. Thanks, Josh. So, hmm. To see which files. Error G Cloud build submit invalid argument. Request contains an invalid argument. Um. One second. I wonder what are the arguments that this is this wants. Well, honestly, it um, <laughs> the error is a little misleading. Uh, Oh, interesting. The error is acting like you gave an invalid argument on the command, but I think it's actually something inside the file. Um, so what happens is the file that you have given it gets translated into a request. So 
that request is is invalid is what it's saying. So it's probably the YAML file that's invalid is my guess. Okay. Um, let's see if I can let's see here. So I know we had to change it at one point. It had uh, steps, name, 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 ID, point marks. Hmm. So let's let's look at a working example for a minute. Yes. Do you want me to? Um... Go there, or, or do you want to share your screen? I will send you a link for another application you can clone. Okay. Um, let me find one here. So let's do, trying to find one that doesn't take forever to run. <laughs> but I want you to see how it's supposed to work when it does work correctly. Okay, let's do this one. I'm going to send it in the chat. Okay. So if you could clone that one. And the URL is not perfect for cloning yet. You'll want to click that and go to the web page first, and it'll give you the right URL to use for cloning. Okay. I'm just gonna stop sharing for a sec, just because my the the Zoom commands are like blocking my site. Okay, no problem. Okay. Okay. Got it. One second. That was some really nice music, though. <laughs> yeah. And I cloned the project and made some of the changes, but I don't think I did it right. Okay. Why don't you think you did it right? Well, for one, I'm pretty sure from your um, description, I'm only supposed to have a couple of files, but I don't know how to make it work with the other repository. Well, you don't have to make it work with the other repository. And maybe I don't understand what you mean by that, though. Um, so I tried copying the uh, cloud build thing and then just adding in my little changes to point to the right location. Well, what ended up happening is when I tried to build it, it got to step two and then it said step exited with non-zero status one. Okay. But I don't know what that means. Okay, so did you create a separate GitHub repo then and you're building it from a trigger? Yes. Good. And I created a completely separate trigger for that repo. Perfect. Okay, good. 
And then that repo, is it pointing to the cloud build file then? Uh, yes, because it should be, since it's to a different repo, it's pulling the same kind of files, but from the new repo instead of the old. So it should be all the same. Right. Okay. Mm. So it says step two failed on yours, John? Yeah, when I tried running the new thing. And also, also interesting enough, um, the first time when it was in the previous repo, it said that there were four steps in the build summary. Now it says there are six steps in my new one. Yeah, it's because the cloud build has now a Docker build, a Docker push step. Uh, you didn't have before. Okay. And since this is a new set of problems, I don't mind if we tackle it another day or another time. I don't know what anyone else's schedule is like. I, d I can't find a job yet, so I'm free all the time. Yeah. Um. We should put you to work then, John. <laughs> I'm trying my best here. I can tell that. <clears throat> Nephi, are you still on your other call? No, I just go back. Okay, cool. All right, so you two can continue. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. And, uh, Okay, so I just opened the, the other project you shared with me. So should you, can you clone it from the command line in the cloud as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's see that. And then I'll show you how it looks when it works, and then we can start troubleshooting what might be broken. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So you'll want to do cd space dot dot so you get out of the folder you're in right now. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what if I like clone it from here? Yeah, that happens sometimes to people and it gets confusing. Okay. It happens to me sometimes. <laughs> so, so you want to clone that other project. Good. There you go. Perfect. Okay. okay. And then we'll want to CD into that folder. Okay. And then we'll want to do gcloud builds submit cloud build test.yaml. So can you repeat that? Sorry about that. So no, you're good. G Cloud builds all together. Base actually. Perfect. Uh, builds though. B U L B U I L D S. Uh huh. And then submit. And then cloud build test .yaml. This one. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Uh, no such. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. I missed one command or one argument. So it's G cloud build submit dash dash config cloud build test. I am. Yeah. Okay. I think that's right. You notice it starts off the same way by uploading a tarball. And see now how it starts the step. 
the build, I mean. Um, yes. So even though it stopped with an error, you see how it got much further this time? Than yes. It. So I just wanted you to see how it, it looks normally. And then I think what we could do is uh, comment out a bunch of things in the cloud build file and try running it with just a little bit and see if it starts off correctly or not in your um, cloud build test. Okay. Or, uh, or sorry, the constellation test project. So on this one, you want me to comment them out? I would comment it out in the shell here. Okay. Mm. So. How do you use Vim or? Yeah, Vim would work, but we're not gonna do comment. Yeah, it's the other one, right? Okay. So... So we want to open Cloud Build Dev, this one, right? Right. How do you open a text editor? Is it Vim or how do you want me to open it? Um, there's also this open editor option um, here as another alternative, but you can use Vim, either one. Editor. Let me try this one. Sure. Do I need to specify a file? Oh, gotcha. So constellation test, and from here, well, no, I guess this is way better. <laughs> okay. Copy of that. Okay, and you say you want me to comment out one of the, some of I the last. I comment out everything except the first step. That's what okay. I would do. Okay. Is there a command that I can just type to select and comment out? Comment out. I'm not super familiar with this editor. There probably is, but I don't know what it is. Okay. You know, I'm just gonna. Do you mind if I just leave the like this fir this first step? Mm -hmm. Let me see if this is working. Because I remember we didn't have that same error until yeah. we added the right this step. So probably um, to save it, should I just let's see? What if you click File Save? Does that work? Um, save yes. Cool. Gotcha. And then open terminal, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can see. It's this command, right? Mm -hmm. No, actually it's working. Yeah, that's good. So it seems like it's related to the file contents, right? Mm -hmm. Just a heads up for both of you, I have to leave in 10 minutes, just so you're aware. Yeah, sorry for taking over the <laughs> for taking over the meeting. Oh no, you're fine.
this is how these meetings go usually. Somebody has a problem and we work on it, so. Okay, so, so far that works. What I can do, I can uncomment the second step. Mm -hmm. John, this process might help you troubleshoot your build as well. Maybe, yeah. Now, Nephi, do you see line 19 where there's that, you still have it commented out? Yes. I'm gonna do that too. Yeah, let's try just this and see if it works with that too. Build, yeah, so it did build. So question, because I know we're running scripts and scripts go out oh, here. Deal okay. complete with status failure. So what it's saying is it tried to test. Um, what is that saying? Error. Invalid argument. Oh, doesn't like the tagging option here. Invalid argument, TCR, IO constellation for dash T, invalid reference format. Uh, Did we not put latest on the end of it? Let me see. I think we did. Um, we have project cancellation tests. On, on this one, we have... Oh, it's just because it wasn't triggered by a push. So that short shot variable is not present, which is why it failed. Um, okay. That's all right. So that's not really a failure. It's just that that short SHA gets injected when it's triggered from GitHub. Um, you could just change it to the word latest here and um, no dollar sign. Yeah. Okay. We won't change that in GitHub, but for testing, it's fine. And then this project ID is okay, right? Yeah, I think so. And then, um, so let me see. So are we, when, when we say build, are we creating a new image with a tag latest? Is that what we're doing? Or yes. is it just a... Uh, build, build is a precursor to pushing the image. So it's building uh, the Docker file into an image and okay. it's tagging that at the time of build so that um, the built image has tagged where we're going to push it to. And then on the push step, we have to say the same location again in the next step. So here, okay, let, let me run this just to. Sure.
I think we're going further than before. Yeah. Yeah, so the build finished. Okay, so what we can do, we can uncomment this and then just I'm going to put here latest. Uh huh. And then, do you think we'll be okay if we just uncomment this as well, or should we go one step at a time? That's going to be a duplicate line um, because it's latest also. Oh, true. So <clears throat> that's true. Interesting. So, qu quite question here. So the short shot, it's supposed to be a tag that is assigned by by cloud bill, right? Yeah. But in this case, we're just using the latest. Yeah. At, at some point, are we gonna need the short shot to like specify? Because this is like pretty much like overriding the previous image, yeah. right? So yeah, that's why we had short shot in there. We're just doing this as kind of a workaround to test because the build is being triggered manually instead of by GitHub. Okay. Oh, that's why short shot will be just oh, okay. So when when it's through GitHub, the short shot will work. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks, John. Have a good day. Oh, see you, John. Then what I'm thinking is that every time we do it manually, so it will it will probably work like when it's automatic, but when it's manual, that short shot is causing that problem. Is that, is that what is happening? Very possible, yeah, very possible. See, so how do we do that? So you really can't trigger it manually. <laughs> right. Yeah, good call. So I guess uh is there like an if statement that we can put there, maybe? Do we really need for this project, do we need the tags or is latest good enough to just have the latest version of the test every time? Yeah, I don't think we will have to like go back to the previous version to. Yeah, so we could just eliminate anything with the short SHA okay. and just use latest just like you're doing here um, and com commit that to GitHub then you can run it manually or from a push and it will work either way. Agree. I have to go, but uh, this was good progress. Good job. Yeah, no, thank you, brother Mordok. I'll try to work on the, on the other tasks. I think I can, I can, I can, I'm, I'm going to be able to move forward. Okay. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank you for your help. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.